Welcome back, everybody, to the Mountain Morning Show. Our couch is jam-packed with a, a, a plethora of thespians, uh, <laughs> is my enjoyment to introduce um, for the Neil Simon um, Festival. Festival going on right now. It's going to take place Wednesday night at the Egyptian Theater. We have Clarence Gilliard, Richard Bug, Quinn Osborne, and Kendall Fulmer. Thank you so much, guys, for coming on the Mountain Morning Show. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so what play are you guys performing? Go, Quinn. Uh, we are doing Biloxi Blues by Neil Simon. And Neil Simon, I know him from The Odd Couple, and he, in, in theater, he is like one of the top gods of, of playwriters. <laughs> yes. um, can you give us a quick synopsis on Biloxi Blues? Um, Biloxi Blues is a show about a bunch of guys that are, are sent out uh, in, in World War II about to go out and get ready for the war. Okay. Um, and they're in this training camp um, going through all the trials and tribulations of, of getting ready to go fight for America. And um, in the show there's love, there's, there's everything that you could ever want. There's comedy, there's, there's going to be tears, hopefully, you know, um, <laughs> if we do our job correctly. Um, but it's, it's everything that you could ever, ever want, every emotion that you will ever want to feel, you will feel seeing the show. The story is told through the writings, the notes of uh, Jerome, Mr. Jerome right here, right here, and he plays the lead. Okay. And this is his ingenue in the play. She's a, she goes to a Catholic school just up the way from the training base in Mississippi. Uh, and, um, and Rick Bug here started our festival 17 years ago. Yep. Yeah, so 17 years ago we oh, started. The, we're the only Neil Simon festival in the country. So you guys are the OG. You're you're it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why Neil Simon? He, uh, well, as you said, he's kind of a god of theater. Yeah. He, he uh, he's had one. He once had four uh, productions running simultaneously on Broadway. He's the most popular playwright. <laughs> that, that's absolutely <laughs> insane. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, to, to just kind of put that into perspective for people who may not know theater that well, mm -hmm. you don't see a director of film having four movies out at one time. I no. mean, right. it's maybe <laughs> yeah. every other year, or every two years. To, so to have four plays on Broadway at one time. Yes. And his works, I, I felt, need, need to be honored and preserved. Mm -hmm. and so we started a festival. And we don't do exclusively Neil Simon plays, but we always have a couple of, of his every year. And then we do many of his contemporaries. And we also have a new play contest where we try to get people to write plays that follow that Simon tradition mm -hmm. of character-driven plots. And character-driven plots is kind of a different way of storytelling. Um, it's, you know, it's usually stories, um, the characters may go for the ride of the plot. Neil Simon makes it so the characters drive the plot. Yes. As actors, is that better for you guys to kind of be like, this evolves around me, or do you guys prefer to hmm. have the story where it's like, you know, we like to see the characters go for the ride and see where, what, what they do and where they overcome at the end? I, I think the difference in, with yeah. this show that, that really makes that change is that you are along for the ride with us. Mm -hmm. Everything that happens, you feel. Every, 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 um, I, I mean. <laughs> you know Ferris <laughs> Bueller's, you, have you, you know Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Oh yeah. Well, ne this guy, this guy's character comes out and he talks to the audience and he says, this is what I'm thinking about, what's going on today. And then somebody calls him back into the world that he's in and you go back and you get to take the ride with him. So, so would you say there's fourth wall breaking? In oh yeah, oh yeah, the whole, yeah. The whole, almost the whole show <laughs> I will come aside and talk to the audience and let them, make them aware of the things that I'm feeling and how things are happening. How important is it to have audience participation in theater? Because, you know, I've, one of the biggest audience participation plays of all time is the Rocky Horror Picture Show where they literally <laughs> yes. have the audience spout out lines and the actors kind of, you know, react to it. Mm -hmm. As actors, do you guys like having audience participation or does it kind of bring you out of it and you're like, oh yeah, there's people here? Yeah, audience participation is huge. I think it just keep, it gives you energy when when what you're giving them they're giving the equal amount it's just it's awesome because it's live theater live theater's cool it truly is a shared experience mm -hmm. uh, that you don't get in a, in a uh, movie theater um, oh, oh totally I mean and it, and you know I, as as an actor I'm and even as an executive producer I'm sure you guys are sitting there and if you see someone laughing at your jokes it brings you into the play even definitely. that much more. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But on the flip side, if it's a dead audience, you guys are yeah. like, 
okay, <laughs> this is hard to crack. Like, yeah. what, what do we do differently? So mm -hmm. anyone who's kind of new to theater, what do you guys have to say to bring them into this? I mean, because theater is fun. I, I would just say to go out and trust yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that the number one thing that you have to have in theater is confidence, because yeah. if you don't trust what you're doing, then you're always going to be second guessing it. So I think if you just go out and have all that confidence that you'll need, you'll have the best show and the audience will enjoy it and they'll give you what you need. Yeah, I would suggest people get on it with the tickets because well, how many years? Seven years? Eight years? We've been coming here. Something like that. Yeah. Right. So this is coming a home to the, for you guys. So co yes, coming to the end of the weekend, mm -hmm. it'll be difficult to get seats, and we open on Wednesday. Wednesday so, at the Egyptian Theater. That's yeah. right. That's and you right. guys are at. Are, is the curtain drawing at eight o'clock or? Except on Sunday, it's at six. Yeah. So more of a matinee type show. That's right, right, right. But it's, this mm -hmm. is a very, 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 very funny show. It's a poignant show. Mm -hmm. um, I should say, uh, Clarence, we, we made the decision to cast Clarence in the role of the sergeant, Sergeant Toomey, okay. uh, which is a, a bit of an anachronism. There, he wouldn't have actually, there wouldn't have been a black sergeant over white soldiers during World War II. But we find telling the story that way to be very poignant and, uh, and very moving, uh, actually. And so. Uh, and, and, and then that's so cool because you're kind of making this very subtle political statement that I probably wouldn't have picked on it if you just didn't tell me that. No, because, you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and exactly. that's cool with theater because you can make those little decisions that someone is going to pick up on and that enhances the storytelling yeah. even that much more. So you're taking Neil Simon's play, but yet you're putting your kind of own um, spin on it. And you're kind of making it, you know, very relevant. Not only is day. it enhancing the story, but it's asking people to comment mm -hmm. on America in 1943 right. and say, well, <clears throat> really? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense to me because there are African-American drill sergeants right now. Yeah. Why were there no African-American drill sergeants in 1943? I mean, they're, they're, there's a little issue called civil rights movement, that's right. but, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. but that's the point. You know, that's yeah. the point because you know that's a, that's a that's a race is a big topic constantly. You know, mm -hmm. in in the transition in the administrations right now, and for people to say, well, no, everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's been fine, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. No, everything wasn't fine, and everything is not fine. And how how long is the uh, play runtime? Is there an intermission, interlude? There is an intermission, okay. up to fifteen. Yeah. It's about two fifteen, two minutes, two hours, fifteen minutes. And again, where is it playing? The Egyptian Theater. Egyptian Theater, opening nights Wednesday at eight. Yeah. Yes, sir. And you'll be there. I will be there. I'm <laughs> definitely going to go. <laughs> Run, runs we'll through Sunday. There. Hopefully, you guys will be there. Yeah, I mean, hope, yeah, we'll be that, there. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be great storytelling with the actors? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. There up. you go. I'll have to go on and do all the parts. Just have someone pantomime it, and you'll be good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the Mountain Morning Show. Thank you so much for telling us about the Neil Simon Festival, and thank you so much for choosing Park City of all places to put this on. Amen. Amen. Definitely. Thank you guys thank so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Conrad. Thank and guys, I can't, I can't shake everyone's hand. Right. I'll see you later, Richard. <laughs> Keep it tuned to the Mount Morning Show. We still have plenty of more show coming up after the break.